Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's give some closing thoughts on the Super Bowl, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, one of the great gamblers in recent memory is Billy Walters. I've posted a video from Billy Walters at gamblersadvisory.com. Billy was making the rounds, pubbing a book. Um, he apparently had promised his book publisher that he'd do interviews, which isn't something Billy Walters does that often. Right? Billy gives you his thinking on the Super Bowl. Folks, he's encyclopedic. He's a guy who knows the numbers. He's a guy who knows the odds. He likes the underdog. He likes the Kansas City Chiefs in the game, right? In his analysis, and he names different parts of it, he's concerned about San Francisco's kicker. He believes that the better coach, the better quarterback, are both on the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, he feels that Pat Mahomes is a gamer in big games. He believes that the chief defense is at least as good as the San Francisco 49er defense. Um, he doesn't have a lot of faith in Brock Purdy. Give it a look. Understand, as I make this video, Kansas City is a two to two and a half point underdog. Now, let me just offer a different opinion. We think for ourselves here. I respect Billy Walters. I follow no gambler, blindly, right? Um, as I always tell viewers here, please do your own research. Understand that Pat Mahomes, in two different Super Bowls, two different Super Bowls, threw two picks, right? He didn't throw a pick in last year's Super Bowl, but understand, two prior Super Bowls, he throws two picks in each game, right? I believe a prop that you need to consider, especially since Pat Mahomes does not have the offensive weapons around him this year that he's had in past years, right? Travis Kelsey, all I can say is contrast his numbers this year with past years. You're going to find that Travis Kelsey is a little bit in decline. You're going to find that the people around Travis Kelsey aren't carrying as much of the offensive load as they have in the past. Right? Let me make another point, too. KC's missing alignment. Thune. That's a big problem. Nick Bosa, San Francisco, really is a Reggie White type character. Right? He's a guy who's already won Defensive Player of the Year, folks. Team speed-wise, I would say that San Francisco will be able to chase down Pat Mahomes. Let's be clear here. Mahomes did not do that well in the second half against Baltimore. Right, I know Baltimore has a great defense and stuff like that. Just understand they shut down Kansas City in that second half, right? So I believe we've fallen in love with the narrative here. In terms of EPA, and again, gamblers, you look this up yourselves. Understand that the quarterback in this game with the highest EPA for the season is Brock Purdy, right? Not Pat Mahomes. Also, Billy Walters, God bless him, he doesn't like Steve Wilkes, the defensive coordinator of the San Francisco 49ers. Of course, right now we're all in love with the defensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs, Steve Spagnola, right? What I want people to do is to look hard at that Baltimore-Kansas City box score, right? Understand, folks. It wasn't so much that Spagnola, in a game where, as we know, Zay Flowers fumbles on what, the one-yard line? Right? In a game where Kansas City does not make it to 20 points. 
understand it's not so much that Steve Spagnola stops the Raven offense as much as the Raven offense stopped itself. Gus Edwards has a big run in the first half. Why did the offensive coordinator for the Ravens stop running the football? Right? Also, you have to be skeptical anytime you look at a box score and their turnovers. Right? Let's face it, in this game you had red zone turnovers for the Ravens. Right? Turnovers will wipe out advantages. Let's not act as if Kansas City went into Baltimore and spanked Baltimore and that Baltimore played their best game. Right, folks, that's not what happened. Let me just also make another point here, too. Lamar Jackson certainly deserved the MVP. I thought the MVP came down to the Christmas game between the 49ers and the Ravens. Going into that game, and we forget this now, the front runner to win the MVP was Brock Purdy, not Pat Mahomes. Mahomes was not in the conversation for the MVP. Now, Brock Purdy threw four picks, two of them off deflections. Right? Brock Purdy threw four picks on the road. Lamar Jackson had a spectacular game, beats the one seed in the NFC, and then follows it up the next week with an even more spectacular game. But I need for folks to understand that the MVP of the league this year did not have the EPA of Brock Purdy. Right? I'm going to disagree with Billy Walters here. Folks, recognize a ringer when you see one. Just like when you're watching an NBA game and you're looking at Joker. And you might not know it. And then you see him make a couple of passes. You say, oh, that was a good pass. That was a good pass. Then you notice the guy keeps doing it. Then you start to come to grips with the fact that the guy is the best passing big man in the game. Then you see Joker back to the basket skills, under the basket. And you realize this guy has great back to the basket skills. Then, of course, he's out there shooting threes. There comes a point when you say, hey, look. Whatever preconceived notion I had when I first started watching this guy. I've got to accept the reality. Folks, this is Brock Purdy's second year. Right? It's the second straight year where he's made it to the NFC Championship game. Right? As I said in an earlier video, Brock Purdy's not a system quarterback. He thrives in Kyle Shanahan's system, no doubt. But he's not a system quarterback. This guy is a gunslinger. As Bruce Arians pointed out on Mike Lombardi's show, he throws the ball into tight windows. Right? Look at the consistency, too, of the games in which Purdy, who threw for more than 30 touchdowns on the season, had a passing touchdown in games. It's not like he had... Five in one game and none in the other. Now, this guy's extremely consistent. So, I'll just say, I admire Billy Walters. I wish I had his insight and knowledge, certainly when it comes to odds and the VIG. Right? Uh, I also admire Pat Mahomes. Truth be told, I was on the other side of the play last year in the Super Bowl. Right? You had an Eagle team. We forget the Eagles were just in the Super Bowl. Yet an Eagle team with a ferocious pass rush. They were an aggressive defense that sacked the quarterback a lot, and you had a diminished Pat Mahomes. He had an injury. He was limping around. He wasn't as mobile as he normal as he normally was. And Mahomes had his best Super Bowl. Right in that Super Bowl, he's down double digits in the second half. But he didn't throw a pick. He brought his team back, right? In both games, both games in which Mahomes won the Super Bowl MVP, he had to bring his team back from 10 or more point deficits in the second half. Understand, 
Kyle Shanahan has played Mahomes in a Super Bowl. In that Super Bowl, where Shanahan's quarterback was Jimmy Garoppolo. Just understand that the 49ers had the Chiefs down by 10 and had the football in the fourth quarter of that game. Right, so here, I like the prop on Mahomes throwing over half an interception. Right, why? Because Mahomes, in two Super Bowl games, threw a total of four picks. And here, he doesn't exactly have great wide receivers to throw to. Right, Rice is a young guy. Right, let me also say, too, that I feel that Baltimore left the game against KC on the table. Baltimore imploded. Lamar did not have his best game, although, let's give Lamar credit. He threw for a lot of yards, right? Lamar threw for over 270 yards in that game. But Lamar didn't have his best game. And, of course, there were turnovers. And they didn't run the football. Right? I believe that game, as well as the Buffalo game, where Mahomes goes on the road and uh, they beat Buffalo. But there again, it's not like they have an offensive explosion. Understand, that game is troubling too because Buffalo was able to run the ball successfully. And look at the Niner roster. Christian McCaffrey was your rushing champ this year. The other running back might even be more important, Debo Samuel, because he's a guy who catches passes and is also a very competent running back. Right? So, just to understand, I don't think the chief run in the playoffs should lead one to overlook what the Niners have done all year. Sure, Green Bay had them on the ropes in rainy conditions for that first Niner playoff game. Right? Folks, Jordan Love, believe it or not, has one of the highest EPAs for quarterbacks in the league. Right? Understand, Green Bay is a little bit deceptive. They're young, but they're extremely talented as Cowboy fans know. More importantly, this game in Vegas is not going to be played in rainy conditions. It's an indoor game. Right, folks? You take away the weather as a hindrance from Brock Purdy, and you're talking about dealing with dynamite. Right, so... The plays I like, I like the Niners in the first half, right? In part because even in last year's Super Bowl, the defending champion Chiefs ended the first half down double digits, right? Andy Reid, I get that today we forget Reid as a Philadelphia Eagle head coach in big games, right? There is an earlier chapter in Reed's coaching career, where Reed had a hard time getting his team out of the NFC Championship game. Right? Andy Reed has had a hard time in the first halves of Super Bowls. Right? We're hearing all the stuff about the script and stuff like that. Andy's a great head coach. He's one of the best I've seen. He's not Bill Walsh in the first half of Super Bowls. Right? Let's just be clear on it. So the hype has gotten a little ahead of the reality, right? I understand. Kansas City won two road playoff games. That's impressive, right? I understand in the first halves against both Green Bay and Detroit, San Francisco did not look great. Had to come back in both games. What I want people to do is to realize that San Francisco is an excellent first half team and that the quarterback who was the leading MVP candidate as late as December 25th 
right? The quarterback who has an EPA that laps most of the NFL is a dangerous quarterback, right? Brock Purdy might come across as a little undersized. His arm is not a Troy Aikman arm. I'll be the first to admit that. Nor was Joe Montana's, right? I don't know what planet we're living in when a guy comes back in the second half of back-to-back -back playoff games and there's still yahoos out there talking about him being a system quarterback. Right, folks? Kyle Shanahan, his head coach, before Purdy, doesn't have a great record, particularly not in the playoffs, of coming back big in playoff games. Right? Understand, Brock Purdy is new for Kyle Shanahan. Right? So don't sleep on the Niners in the first half. Don't sleep on the Niners getting at least one pick off Pat Mahomes. Right? If Pat is completing 10 passes in the first half to Travis Kelsey, sure, you could look at that and say, wow, this is, um, you know, a special connection, and it is a Hall of Fame connection. But there's the other side of the coin here. You mean to tell me that Pat Mahomes had to pass the ball to Travis Kelsey 10 times in the first half of that game? Where was the rest of the wide receiving core? Right? You mean to tell me that if I shut down Travis Kelsey, I'm going to be forcing Pat Mahomes to throw the ball to who? Sky Moore? Rushy Rice? Rice delivered for me in a fantasy pool this year. He's an up-and-comer, but understand, that's what we're talking about, right? There is no Brandon Ayuk on the Kansas City Chiefs. Look at Ayuk's yards per reception, right? So let's just say I'm surprised by all the love being given to Kansas City. I'm surprised the line is under three, right? I'm expecting the Niners first half to come out and have a lead at halftime. I'm not expecting it to take until the second half for that to happen, right? Let's remember too, Debo Samuels gets knocked out of one of the playoff games. He's healthy, folks. He'll be in the Super Bowl from the opening play, opening offensive play for San Francisco. Right, so I'm expecting the Niners to start fast. I'll concede there is a gap in the kicking game. I'll concede Kansas City has a better kicker. Right, I'm not giving an opinion on the final score of the game, although I do believe Kansas City is the better, excuse me, I do believe the Niners are the better team and that Brock Purdy is competitive with Pat Mahomes. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.